Everyone, Liam here. Welcome to this week's YouTube video. This week we're going to be going over in depth how we paint eyes. This video is split into two sections. The first section is I'm going to show you the process and how we paint eyes on a digital art program. And then the second section, I'm going to actually do it on the miniature. Now, you don't need to watch all of it. If you want to skip ahead to when I just paint it on the model, then skip ahead to around about 22 minutes. But I would recommend that you watch all of it because it's going to help you with the uh, get you to, to get you the best understanding possible. It is worth noting this video is part of a series that's going on Patreon for this particular bust on how we paint skin. So if you do want to support me, if you do want to check it out, please feel free to check out my Patreon for far more additional in-depth video content. There's also options on there for tuition and I'm also available for commission. So feel free to get in touch. If the video is helpful. Hit that like button. Feel free to leave me comments below. And here we go. Right, so starting off, this is where we are at. This is the sketch stage that we saw in the previous video. So I haven't gone any further. Now, when you choose to paint eyes is entirely up to you. I like to do them before I've refined everything because for me, I generally make quite a few mistakes with my brush strokes. Um, and I can end up making a bit of a mess of the skin, especially at the smaller scale. So I prefer to paint the eyes before I've done all the skin and then it doesn't matter so much if we mess up. So with that in mind, the first thing that we're going to do, uh, and this is why I'm going to do this on the art program first, because I can zoom in this much and it's really clear so I can show you and demonstrate properly. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to paint in the white of the eyes. Now, I know a lot of people we will automatically assume to use white. This is definitely something that we don't do. We want an off white. I generally like to grab whatever my skin tone is and then push it towards like an off white color. So it's generally going to be something similar to ivory. So the tone of color that I'm going to be going for for this is something like this. See, it's really quite pale. Now, Goal here is nice and easy. This is effectively a base coat. So all we're going to end up doing is coloring in white. Now it is worth noting that we do need to separate this from the skin with some kind of darkness. So get the color in. Now the issue that can sometimes arise is this, the eye and the eyelid can be very difficult to separate. So what it can be worth doing sometimes is getting a brown of some kind or just a dark shadow color and just reinforcing this line, separate them along the bottom. Now, to be fair, if you're not, if you're a bit worried about being able to paint that line, then could be worth using um, a wash at that stage and just dropping it in the bottom. So next up, what we need to do is start painting the iris. Now with this section of the eye, there's lots of different tones in it. So the reason why that's important to know is because this is the point where we need to build up lots of color. So the first thing that I do for my process is I paint a line. Now I'm not, I wouldn't normally do this if I was doing a, an art piece like on the computer, but I think it's important to show the steps that I would take when it comes to miniature painting. Now, the reason why I would start with a line is because ultimately if I was doing the second eye, that gives me a good point to make them symmetrical. So just as an example, so that's both our eyes with the, I think it's called a skelia or something. I don't know. White bit of the eye. So the reason why I would start with the line is basically what that allows us to do is we can start with that line in the same place on both of the eyes. So we start with like snake eyes. Now what it allows us to start with something mildly symmetrical. If we look at these eyes, this one is slightly off to the left. So the benefit is we know when we start making these bigger. Uh, sorry, it's just a bit, yes, 
bit too far over to the left. So we're going to start working this side more. So it gives us shape to adjust. And then when we go to do the other side, we know that we don't have to take it as far over. So the benefit of the start in the line is that we can use that center line and we can adjust our eyes left and right to get a symmetrical result. Now, obviously I'm doing this fairly quickly, so it's not going to be perfect. Otherwise we'll be here all day on this video. Uh, I apologize for all the banging in the background. The kids are at home now because it's school holidays, so there's not much that we can do about it. But yeah, so, and then we could just make the adjustments as we want, depending on the eye shape. If I was to make this eye bigger, as an example, then we look, and we would do this. This is exactly what I would do on a miniature. So one eye is bigger than the other. So because we started from the center, know that if we just make this side a little bit larger, and then the same with this side. So by starting in the center, it gives us room to adjust to the left or the right. If one of them is starting to look a little bit off, like if it's not matching up with the other one, it means that we can adjust it left or right. That's why we start with that center line. Now, if this was a 28 millimeter model, this would be enough. Okay, on most 28 mil infantry human size models, getting the white in the eye and then getting the black circle would be enough. What you can do if you want to push it with 28 mil, so the smaller scale stuff, I pretty appreciate I'm going off topic a little bit, um, but what you can do is you can get a very thin amount of washes work really good for this but just get a tiny little bit of red into the little corners of the eyes and then that will just give it a bit of like life um, and just dropping down some thin wash can have quite a big impact on that but that's one thing you can do. And if you're going up to say 54 or 75 mil, what I would suggest is definitely a good idea. If you can, that's showing up. Is adding the white dot. I mean, you can do this at 28 mil as well, but it is incredibly difficult. But this dot would need to follow your light source is really important. So with this bust, I appreciate this is the bust. We're going to go much further with the eyes, but with this bust, our light is coming from the top right. So what that means is these dots that we're going to place, if this was smaller, would be on the top right of the eye. So we could do a dot and then a dot. Or if you're really feeling confident about it, what can look really nice at small scale is a second dot. And it can be done at 54 and 75 mil. Now in this, it looks very artificial. It looks very strange. That's because it's a large scale model and we're looking at a big, it's quite a large picture, but that's what you would be aiming for. Now, the only thing that I would say is when you've got perfectly round circles in your eyes, it gives it the impression of a very artificial light. It's like there's a light bulb on it. So if you're going for something a bit natural, um, if, if they're out on the battlefield or if they're out in a forest or, or anything like that, you get much more um that light spot is not so extreme so what can be a really good idea instead of putting a really thick opaque mark down if you why not see What's a really good thing to do instead of putting a dot if you kind of like brush on a very thin line and you want the line to be inconsistent 
So it doesn't even have to be a line. It's just got to be like a broken shape. Something like that on both eyes. Um, so make sure both eyes are symmetrical with this mark. But yeah, don't tie yourself to having like a white dot because that can look very unnatural. So yeah, sometimes a nice um, thin white mark, inconsistent mark, can give, give a much nicer result at that small scale of model. But we're talking about our bust here in specific. So this is where we have the size, the shape, the area to really go mad with eyes. So the next thing that we need to do is continue working on the iris. Now our irises are not black, we have color in our eyes. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start adding some color to this. Now I like to do this in two or three stages. You don't have to do all of these, you can cut steps out if you're not comfortable with it. But the first thing that I'm gonna do, the fact that there's a pupil going to be here, I'm gonna completely ignore at this stage because it's easier to add that later in. So going to try and imitate what I would do for a brush stroke as well. So normally um, what I would do is start on the outside, uh, sorry, start on the inside and then flick my brush towards the outside of the iris. And I'll show you this when I do the model, when I physically do it on the model as well. So in this case, we're going for a blue eye. Now I would use transparent paint as well because I first of all I don't want a really vibrant color because that can look very um, unnatural and fantasy there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you're going for but we're, with this particular model we're going for something relatively realistic so I start from where the pupil would be and then I flick my brush towards the outside and I'll show you exactly what I mean by this brush stroke when when I actually uh, demonstrate painting eyes on the model so that's how we start off now the next thing is we want a brighter section we can't we don't we don't just want one color so what I like to do is add some more brightness but with sharper lines this time so this would be a brighter blue so this would be the same brush stroke, but the difference here is I would want harder lines. So my, my brush stroke, my paint would be a little bit more opaque at this point, and I would be going for really thin lines. And the idea of this is not necessarily to highlight or anything like that. We want some variation. Because our eyes are not just one color, there's all sorts of different shapes and that sort of stuff in them so we get something something like that so that's that's the next stage right next up we need to start making them actually look like eyes so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to paint that pupil in now for me i've got no issues using black here so it's just a case of putting in a black circle there we go nice and simple now, we have what we need for eyes at this stage, but they still don't look very lifelike. And that's because we need to shade and highlight them. We need to give them their reflective property. So <clears throat> the next step we're gonna do is we need a shadow line along the top of the eye. This is really important because basically what happens is the eyebrow eyelid on the top that casts a shadow along the top of the eye. We need to make sure that we have that in there. We're going to have something like that. So we've got a nice shadow line. This is really important to sell that result. But it's still not right. But straight away, all of a sudden, it's interacting with everything else around it. So this is really important. Now, 
not quite so easy as it is on an art program. So what I would probably suggest you do is darken up this skin tone that you've got. I like to desaturate it, so I'll add a little bit of black and that'll push it a little bit darker, but it'll also make it more gray. But experiment with it. And the thing is as well, this also makes it easier to add our light reflections later on, but we'll get to that. So the next thing that we need to do is get a highlight, a bright spot in the iris of the eye. What we're going to do is we're going to go back to that blue, make somewhat of a more opaque mark. Now, in this case, because our light is coming from the top right, remember, because that's what's happening on our model, bottom left of the eye is what we're going to make brighter. Now, I don't want to touch in that shadow area. So we'll have something like that. Remember, the light's going to behave relatively the same on both eyes. So that's the next step. Now, at this point, you could, with the exception of the reflections, you could call the eyes done. Now, for me, um, there's not really enough um there's not really enough life in the eyes in the actual white of the eyes so what i generally like to do is uh preferably not that messy why was that so messy oh, rush there we go so what i like to do with this is i'll glaze in some pink generally just towards the shadow here Just because what it does is it gives us some kind of inclination that there's there's it's more fleshy, there's like blood there. Okay. Something like that. And yes, I would do this on a bust. So eyes are really complicated, but they're the most important part of a model because it's what they what brings them to life. It's what brings the model to life, it's what gives it soul. We should be spending as much time as physically possible on the eyes when it's relevant. We need to bring them to life. We need the reflection. The reflection is what brings eyes to that realistic point. It's what gives them soul. It makes it stops them looking like a toy. So with that in mind, there's a few things that we can do, and we've touched on it already at the smaller scale. So without overcomplicating it, our light is coming from the top right in this case. So our main reflection is going to be in the top right. Now, if you've got something, if you've got a, um, if you've got a figure, which is in a, a very artificial area, then something like a little circle can be very nice because it may well be under artificial light. Um, that's not really the best way of doing that. Um, so having like a hard circle, like a dot, is what you would do on the miniature uh, with your brush. Sorry, I haven't changed my settings. That can work because you'll have those strong lights in your eyes if you're in an artificial setting. So if you decide to go down this route, there's nothing wrong with that. What I would personally suggest, though, is don't just do one dot. Do a small one and then do one which is slightly larger. just because, again, it makes it a little bit more interesting. So we are using a white dot at this, at this stage, but that's what you can do. It's not what I like to do because I find it very unnatural. So for me personally, what I'll do is I'll get a very thin white paint. And the idea with this, 
and get my brush settings right. There we go. So the idea with this is I'll create some kind of shape. So I quite like starting with a line. So I'll paint a line. Something like that. And then what I'll do is I'll mess that line up a little bit. And bearing in mind, like this looks really dodgy on here right now. And I haven't actually got white. There's lots of little grays. Done that on purpose. So when we're painting, because I'm using a very transparent paint, we've got a lot of grays that come through. We end up with lots of variation. So what that means is when I do that, we have this sort of reflection, which for me looks far, far more believable. If you want to push it like we could, I don't know, could also put like a bit of a bright mark here, like push a little bit of it as well. Okay. So there's lots of things that you can do, but a broken mark with a far more unusual shape will look far more interesting. So really important to think about the shape of your reflection, kind of define where your, your character is, if that makes sense. So from here, it's up to you what you do. There's a few other adjustments that you can make if you want. It can be quite nice to add, like extend this a little bit. Oh. We go. Sorry about that. So it can be quite nice to extend this a little bit and do like another little reflection. It can be quite nice to push this section of the eye, just make it a little bit brighter. That always looks quite good. The other thing is, is if you want to, what can be quite good is reinforcing this red value in the corner of the eyes. Give it a little bit more life and along the bottom because it adds a shadow reinforces the, the life that you see in the eye the reflection reflective surface and also gives the impression that the eye is curved obviously i'm not going to finish the other one but you can see the difference between adding those shadows and adding those reflective surfaces to turn this eye into this one on the right and that's the process so when we're talking about digital art there's far more things that we can and would do but this isn't a digital art tutorial the reason why i've done this is because this is a very clear way of showing you the process for painting eyes on busts now i'm now going to do it on the bust so i'm going to show you this exact process and we'll Hopefully it gives you a very clear understanding of what we're aiming for. Right, so we're going to move on to the painting section. Now, some of this footage is going to be sped up and please understand as well, like this is really zoomed in, right? I've zoomed in as much as I possibly can and I'm trying to keep it in focus and on screen, but it's going to be quite difficult just because of the size of the model. But you can see I'm laying down the base coats for the eye. Now this is Velo model color ivory with a hint of red in it just to make it a little bit more pink. You don't have to do that. As I said, if you've still got your skin tone mixed up, then add white to it until it gets to something to an off white. Uh, and that'll also be quite nice. But I'm building up the layers here. Now, the only reason that I'm even showing this really is I want to point out the direction of my brush stroke. So I'm always starting with my brush towards one of the corners of the eyes and then pulling it towards the center because the point on the brush is easier to get into those areas. And then obviously when we pull it towards the center of the eye, there's far more space for the actual belly of the brush. So there's less chance of making mistakes. You can see here that it's still not perfect. There's a little bit of mess around the edges of the eyes. I did say I make a lot of mistakes with this. This is why I start with the eyes and not the skin because it saves messing up a lot of work. 
Right, so next up, we're going to start painting the pupils or the iris, sorry. So same as we did on the digital version, we're going to paint the lines straight down. Now, it's really important that your paint is thin here, not because we want a transparent mark, but we want these lines to be as fluid as possible. You don't want any resistance from the paint when you're doing a brush stroke. What I mean by that is when we do a brush stroke, you should be able to get a nice clean line of paint, nice mark, uh, and there shouldn't be any chalkiness to it. So in this case, I've thinned the paint down enough so it's fluid, but still as opaque as possible, just so I don't have to put um, as much, just so I don't have to put as many layers of paint over it. In this case, I'm using Vallejo model color black and it's thinned down to one part water to one part paint. That's enough in this case, but it might be different for your own brush, for your own paint, sorry. You see, I put the lines in, so snake eyes, nice and simple. Now, it, depending on the size of what you're painting, if you're painting 28 mil, you've obviously got to be really careful. You've got to have some nice, neat brush strokes. But if you're doing a bust, although this isn't a large bust, um, if you're doing a bust, you don't have to worry too much about having really thin lines. But remember, when you're trying to get a point on your brush, make sure, make sure you remove any excess paint from your brush and then pull your brush along a piece of kitchen roll or your hand and twist it as you go. And then that will restore your point and it will also remove any excess paint. And then test your brush mark on something else, because if there's a issue with your brush, so if the point isn't correct, if the paint's too thick or it's too thin or there's too much on there, you'll find that issue off of the model. So your mistake will happen off the model, not on the model. So it's really important. <clears throat> so you can see we're painting on where we're making the iris of the eye much wider now and I'm adjusting each side slowly and this is how I make sure that the eyes are relatively symmetrical so they don't look really off in the end product and you can already see that I'm making little mistakes here so I've painted on the bottom of the eyelid this is again why I don't paint the skin first this is just me it's whatever works for you at the end of the day there's no right or wrong way of doing it it's just personal preference and you need to find the way that works for you Right, so infuriatingly, I didn't click record on the last section, which I apologize for. But what I've done is, same as when we went over the digital version, I've painted on the blue of the eye. I've start, started with a dark Prussian blue from Vallejo Model Color, and I've added small amount of white to it. Then I've painted in the blue on the iris, and I've tried to leave the black line around the edge just because that gives us a clear separation between the the white of the eye i keep forgetting what it's called but it gives us a clear separation between the iris the blue of the iris and the white of the eye so that's really important and then i've gone over it with a slightly lighter blue add in white because i want a desaturated white uh blue sorry because i don't want a lot of vibrancy there now I've just gone over that with smaller lines to give it a mottled appearance. You don't have to worry about blends because the reality is they're not, you're in such a small area at this point. Sometimes it's actually better not to have a blended transition because you can lose the, you can, it can look less clear. So just something to think about. So I apologize for that. Um, I've also then painted in, as you can just see here, um, I painted in the pupils, the black circles within the iris. So straight away, we have the right shape. As I said, I apologize that I didn't click record on the footage. I thought I had. It is a little bit frustrating, but you have seen exactly what I did on the digital version. So that does explain it all. So next up, you can see here that there's red in the eye now. Um, so I put the red in the eye because that is really important to kind of give life to the eye. Now it's worth noting this isn't the only way of doing it. If you look at reference pictures for eyes, there's lots of different ways. There's lots of different colors in eyes. So you can vary this, but this is the basic way that I do it. Then with the top of the eye, I'm putting that shadow line in that you can see that's really important. 
It doesn't have to be really big. It can be quite subtle. It's probably a little bit too big at the moment at this stage on the eye, but I solve that later when I make adjustments. Now with the red, when you put the red in, you want to glaze that in. So you want a really soft transition or you want a really thin paint. So thin the paint down so it's really transparent. So probably like five, four or five parts water, one part paint, and then push it towards the um, towards the recesses, towards the outside of the eye. Now, I wouldn't worry too much if you've got any hard marks. Like you can see, this looks really rough, especially on the left eye. Solve that later by just going back with the, the off-white color that we use for the white of the eye to smooth it all out. So don't worry too much about making a mess. Remember, it's only paint. If we make a mistake, easily fix it. And believe me when I say I've made, I make plenty of mistakes when I'm doing eyes. I'm also, this isn't, I'm, I'm looking for a really nice result here, but remember with this model, not looking at competition piece, the priority here is just that I show the process for everything as much as possible. So we're going to get a nice result on it, but it's going to be far from perfect. And the reason for that is I want to show that you don't necessarily have to paint something ridiculously precisely um, and neatly for it to look good. Um, I apologize for my head keep getting in the way. To be fair, the video for you so far for painting these eyes is 100 times better than I was expecting because obviously doing this on camera is an absolute nightmare. So, yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to show you this section of the footage. This is where I'm basically just making loads of adjustments. So I'm going back in with the white, the off-white to adjust the position of the shadow to tone down the red because he looks incredibly bloodshot at the moment. Um, it's not overly important footage, but I think it's really important to be able to show that there's a lot of flaws. Um, everyone makes a lot of a lot of mistakes when it comes to painting any process. Now, what I probably would say when it comes to repairing anything that's maybe a little bit funky, with your paintwork. In this case, because it's such a small area, I'm using quite transparent paint and I'm doing very small brush marks like little dots with paint that's probably thinned down to like four parts water to one part paint. Because what that does is it gives you a very soft mark. And if you build those dots up in a stippling motion, it will naturally create quite a nice nice soft transition so when we are going over the red for example when you first go over the red you're going to get quite a pink result which is what you can see and then as you build it up with that ivory tone it's going to gradually get brighter and brighter and then this will help with the reinforcing the fact that this is a spherical object that the eye is obviously spherical um, so it's just the case of building up with very thin paint with tiny little dots and marks. And at the same time, I'm trying to adjust the shape of the iris because there's still a lot of um, imperfections in the eye. There's still um, the iris isn't perfectly circular. There's little issues with the shadow that I'm not I'm not happy with. Um, so it's worth pointing out these eyes took me probably a couple of hours. If I was doing this as a much higher quality, I'd probably be spending maybe four or five hours just making sure the eyes are perfect, but wasn't needed for this particular um, miniature. So as you can see, this is this is the most important point on this model. This is where we put the reflections in, and this is where we bring life to the miniature. Now, I am using pure white, but the difference here is at first I'm using thin pure white. So this paint is transparent. So the mark that I put down is not going to make a solid white mark. I don't want that yet. So this paint is probably thin to two parts water to one part paint, so it's nothing major. And the idea here is I'm doing some kind of broken line along the top of the iris, and then I'm doing a secondary little dot or line or mark in the white of the eye. Now remember where we put the shadow along the top of the eye? The idea, the idea is that that secondary little dot or the secondary little mark goes into the shadow area. And then that way it makes it, little, makes it pop a little bit more, makes the, the white color that we're using stand out against that dark shadow. And then once I've got it in place, I go back over it 
with the white and instead of covering the whole thing I'm going to put a small amount of marks in that white area and then that makes it pop even more to a really bright white straight away you can see that those eyes are looking quite lively now in this case I decided to brighten up the bottom left of the iris in the blue it was an artistic choice I quite liked it it's not necessarily correct but it works for me kind of feels like it gives me more of a glassy eye result but as 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 I said previously there are there are loads of different ways to do eyes there is loads of little there are loads of different ways to do reflections in eyes depending on the light so get some reference materials that's really important don't copy what I'm doing just copy the process to start out and then get your get your reference material to material to choose where your um, reflections are going to be now it's also worth noting I have I, I, I didn't use white but I've used like the ivory to really push the white of the eyes as well just in the, the top sections right next to the iris just to again reinforce that whole idea that these eyes are spherical but that's it I mean you can see on screen that's the eyes done other than some minor tweaks and adjustments which I'm going to do off cam but that is the process the basic process to do a basic set of a set of eyes eyes are a really fun thing to do because you can just go absolutely mad with the reflections but that's how you get a nice realistic result hoping that it's nice and clear um, and I'm hoping this video is helpful if you've got any questions feel free to let me know in the comments below if you've got any feedback around the format of this video if the if, if showing you this on a 3d art program was not helpful then let me know um, because there's no point me wasting time doing that in the future if it's not going to be a benefit to anyone.